All right, so we've been having the ongoing conversation around defunding the police, especially with this latest string of shootings by the police that we have seen. And um, we've been talking about how absurd some of these budgets are. The NYPD is probably the most egregious example of a bloated police budget. And um, there was a recent video that went viral, which perfectly encapsulates and puts on full display how ridiculous these budgets are, because it was a video of a robot dog that the police are using uh, in whatever capacity they're going to be using it. But basically, this, these companies like Boston Dynamics develop these robot dogs, or in some case, robot humans, um, that have all sorts of capabilities with them, like access with drones or uh, cameras or other things that these things are doing. And it's just absolutely ridiculous and absurd um, that we are seeing, as all of these other, other programs, societal programs, are underfunded, like education, like healthcare, that the police are spending money on shit like this. Um, especially considering what we've seen over the course of the pandemic with so many people struggling. And so Jamal Bowman uh, did an interview where he talked about this viral video and um, talked about how ridiculous the entire situation is. And I think that he is 100% right in this clip. So let's go ahead and listen to what he had to say. And then I'm going to give you some more details about the NYPD budget and why this entire situation is so ridiculous. This is crazy. Robot police dogs walking down the street. So all summer, we in these streets protesting for black lives. We screaming black lives matter. We're, we're marching in solidarity with people from across the city and across the country. We standing up to police brutality directly. And what did we get in return? We got police attacking people, brutalizing people, assaulting people for just walking down the street. We got another killing of Dante Wright. We got the murder of George Floyd and we got Breonna Taylor and so many others that we can't comprehend. We scream defund the police so we can reallocate those resources towards something that focuses on true public health and public safety. Protesting all summer for black lives, we were under assault. People living in poverty, struggling, struggling to put food on the table, keep a roof over their head, take care of their kids, afford childcare, all is going on. And now we got damn robot police dogs walking down the street. What the hell do we need robot police dogs? This is some Robocop shit. This is crazy. Robot police dogs walking down the street. So, yeah, I mean, they get into some of the details here of the NYPD budget, but I'm going to do that so we don't need to watch the rest of that. But you understand what Jamal Bowman's, where his anger is coming from, right? So he's obviously a representative in New York, and so he's been uh, on the front lines in many of these protests and, and discussing things with some of these organizers on the ground and the problems that we have. And he understands. I mean, he is a policy-oriented politician, a leftist politician, marginally at least. Um, and he supports things like defund the police. And I'm glad that we have at least some members of Congress now who are willing to come out and make the positive case for defunding the police because it seems like all too often the entire conversation around the police is all of these ridiculous reactionary Democrats and Republicans um, who don't really want to actually have the deeper conversation about how do we address crime? How do we address and fix our broken criminal justice system? And many of them think the only solution that we have is more police officers, more militarized police, more heavily armed police to be in these communities acting essentially as an occupying force and they refuse to have the conversations about what the underlying factors are here like education like access to health care like all of these other things that he was pointing out in this uh, that play a role in the environment that people are brought up in and um, could be more effective at addressing some of these problems and that's never the conversation that a lot of these mainstream politicians are willing to have and so it's good that we have at least a couple you know like Cory Bush uh, and some others are willing to have these types of conversations and actually explain it. And we've seen over the last year as the defund the police movement sort of started um, that the popularity of it has grown massively. And that's because, yes, originally people were like, ah, defund the police, that means you want to abolish the police tomorrow. And then once you actually have the conversation and you realize what people mean is defund these ridiculous bloated uh, police budgets and then reallocate those resources towards more effective programs. The police are simply not effective, okay? If your end goal is to reduce crime, police are not the answer to that, okay? We already have around 4% of the world's total population and close to 24% of the world's prison population. So we're already locking up more people than anyone else around the world. 
and we already spend more on our policing than anyone else around the world, and this is emblematic by facts like this. The NYPD's $6 billion budget would make it the 33rd largest military spender on the world. So, in other words, the NYPD's budget is more than most countries' militaries, than most countries' militaries. So we're dumping obscene amounts into this style of uh, addressing uh, criminal justice in this country. And it's clearly not fucking working. So maybe we could try something else, some things, some other social programs that many other countries around the world have tried and that do work. One example is we could use a Medicare for all type system that guarantees healthcare as a human right. We could provide pu a free public college. We could cancel student debt. We can do all of these things that address the actual material conditions of people that do have a material effect on reducing crime as a long-term investment in that. But if your only approach to this is, let's just throw more police at the problem, well, you're just gonna keep seeing shit like this. NYPD says it used restraints at protests, here's what the videos show. And of course, we've been through this, we've seen all of the examples, okay? They're, they're, they're brutalizing protesters for simply speaking out on such a basic issue, right? And you see how these police uh, organizations work, how their unions work, and by the way, police should not have a union. Um, I am a very pro-union person, but police are the one example where that is a massive exception because police, are, their function is not to be a, a to protect and serve the communities okay their job is not to protect and serve communities their job is to protect and serve the capital uh, ownership class that is their purpose and so that's why you see them and historically this has been the case but it even is today um participating in breaking up other unionizing efforts they are uh the the last line of defense for the capital ownership class they their interests are diametrically opposed to many of the other interests of working class americans that's why they shouldn't have a union but you see how all of these different forces that are at work here because in many cases in a lot of these municipalities the police are really running the show uh, and you'll have mayors and stuff that are totally unwilling to confront the police because of how much power their unions have how much power uh, these blocks of police actually have and the leverage that they are willing to use over some of these public officials who are supposed to be oriented towards what is best for public safety what is best for the public at, at, uh, um, in general Whereas they're really having to operate based on what are the interests of these police unions. And in many cases, that results in the bloated, ridiculous budgets that we see uh, right now, as pointed out by Public Citizen again in this tweet. Um, and this also comes at a time where New York has glaring other issues that need to be addressed. Federal data shows nearly 80,000 homeless in New York City. So you have 80,000 homeless people in New York City. You're doing nothing substantively to really address that problem. And yet you're jacking up these military budgets uh, or these uh, police budgets, which are in a sense a military budget because of how the uh, how much militarized uh, weaponry and vehicles that they get. Um, but federal data, I mean, 80,000 homeless people. So you're not solving this problem, but you're adding robot fucking dogs to your police force. And by the way, let me just say as a side note, on the robot police dog things, if you see one of those, I think we all have a moral obligation to punt those into the atmosphere on site, okay? Because these things are ridiculous, okay? There's no reason why the government should be spiraling towards dystopian uh, hellscape capitalist future at this speed, okay? Can we put the brakes on a little bit and not be um, as aggressively dystopian as we are headed for right now? I mean, this is ridiculous. So the robot police dogs need to go, but again, address the fundamental issues within your society before adding police dogs to your force. Um, and then we also see it at the same time as even, again, this is Republicans and Democrats in many circumstances, Andrew Cuomo uses budget to cut Medicaid. He was pushing to cut Medicaid during a fucking pandemic, okay? So at the, at the same time as these people refuse to cut these police budgets, right? They're then turning around and cutting social safety net programs. They're cutting education. They're cutting healthcare spending. So it shows you where these people's priorities are. And again, this is something that crosses lines. This is Democrat. This is Republicans. Republicans are probably far worse at it. But this goes across the board. We have Joe Biden in the White House right now who would never even dream of saying defund the police because he doesn't even care about having the actual conversation behind it, let alone Kamala. Um, but yeah, I mean, this, this is just one of those stories, right? New York City Police Department now has robot police dogs out there working for them, doing surveillance or whatever the fuck they're going to be using them for. At the same time as we have all of these other problems, lack of investment in healthcare, lack of investment in education, 
education and they tell us constantly that we can't afford these other programs as they dump money in a more, a more local sense they dump money into these police departments and at a federal sense they just dump money into our bloated military budget right I mean we have a 740 some odd billion dollar a year military budget at the same time as Joe Biden is telling us we can't afford Medicare for all so it's an issue that goes across the board federally locally it's an issue that crosses party lines and it's an issue that we have to confront because like Jamal Bowman said this is fucking crazy.